some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey everyone, welcome back to Board Games Unlocked, and today I'm doing a discussion over Clash of the Ardenes? Ar Ardens? Ar you know, actually, I have, I have never, uh, never looked up on, uh, <laughs> how to pronounce that. Uh, okay, it's, it's, Ar uh, here we go, right here, it's right here, how to say it. Arden. Arden. Clash of the Ardens, which is a um, kind of like a it's a, it's a two player like one yeah obviously one v one tug of war slash rock paper scissors kind of game and there's a couple of caveats with this uh, with this review here is one I don't remember how I even got a copy I must have backed it on Kickstarter. Uh, because it just showed up one day. And the second is when it showed up, I thought it was a prototype because there's the way it showed up, it was not in shrink wrap. It was not in any type of protective. It just showed up and, and like the, the box lid was like, you know, half on and lifted and contents are all over the place. So, uh, I was thinking, oh, okay, this is the prototype of the game, but this is the finished copy as far as I'm aware, and uh, it is, and what's also weird is I don't really remember why I would have ever backed this, because there's not really, this isn't a theme that I'm personally interested in, and it's specifically over the battle of, uh, oh, where is it, um, where is the, oh, it's in here. I'm like, where the hell's the rule book? It is over the Battle of the Bulge. Yeah, the Battle of the Bulge. So let's go over the positives of this game. Is I think uh, overall, like at least the unit pieces, I I kind of like. They're wooden. Um, at least they're plywood. Like is kind. Of, I think this is a type of wood. So they're they're light, but they are still wooden and. The print that's on them is well done. Like, it doesn't feel like it's peeling off or anything. Uh, so I like the wooden pieces. And then, the, I know art is subjective. I personally enjoy this art. If you've ever seen the game The Grizzled, it gives me that kind of, like, quick journal art. Uh, you know, not like... it's. This is better than The Grizzled, I think. Uh, but it is in that same vein of, like, it's not high detail, but you can clearly tell what it is. Uh... And it, it is colorful, but at the same time, this is a battle that apparently took place in winter uh, between, uh, you know, two warring factions. So, the overall, my overall consensus of this game is, is it's, it's kind of a nothing game for me. Like, I got really nothing out of it. I felt no strategic depth to it. Um, it's not the worst game I've ever played, but it's certainly not the best. There's a lot of kind of abstract games that I would much rather play that do give me that kind of brain burny feel here. Uh, so I'm, I'm thinking that this is for people who are really into history, but at the same time, I can't imagine that you're going into this game and feeling like you're participating in uh, this particular battle. Uh, the overall gameplay is you are given um, an objective card and there's a bunch from here. Uh, granted, this is just for variety's sake, so it's not actually like you're not getting multiple objectives. So you basically shuffle them up, and then uh, whoever goes first, which uh, I got a metal coin. Uh, so you just flip the coin, and it's like, oh, okay, haha. Like it says, allies go first. Okay. They draw an objective card, and the other player draws another one. And then that's pretty much it. And on these cards, you'll give be given uh, two objectives. Uh, you can do one or the other. The top one is you have to get specific roads. There's roads one through seven. And you have to control both those roads. Or conquer three random roads. So if you happen to lose one of the roads, uh, you're not, like, incapable of winning. Then it's just like, okay. But the, the weird thing is, is they use random a lot in this game. Um, like, you can get uh, special abilities that are, like... Oh, do this at a random time, and it's like, what do you mean by random? Like, and really what it is is just kind of, 
in this case, conquer th it's three other roads. Like, it doesn't have to, this one is uh, conquer roads one and two. Or conquer three random roads. Okay, well, if you lose one, then you just do three other roads. The word random is uh, misused a lot here because some of the abilities you get is like, uh, like get get uh, two extra action points out on a random round. It's like, what do you mean random round? I guess you know, roll a die and uh, or a d20 and be like, all right, in round 13, I get two extras. Uh, it's it's really just do get two extra action points of your choice, and then that, that ability goes away. Um, so when that, what I mean by conquering is you're, there's roads one through seven, and you're basically you have these different units: uh, infantry, three different types of infantry, anti tank, and tanks. And basically, it goes in like a rock paper scissors kind of thing. Infantry. Beats anti mines, anti mi or uh, yeah, anti mines beat tanks, and tanks beat infantry. And then it goes a little bit deeper than that with the three different types of infantry. There's sergeant, corporal, and private. So if they ever fight, uh, if infantry ever fights, it's based off rank. Uh, and really, all you're doing is you have four action points you can spend. There's no player aid whatsoever. Uh, they gave you uh, they gave you this, which just shows the units. And what they, I guess what they defeat, cool. I mean, that is kind of, that is helpful, but it'd be nice to know where your actions are, even though the actions are extremely simple. It's either place a unit on a road or uh, flip a unit or like move a unit from the back all the way to the front, uh, retrieve a unit back um, or, or yeah, remove a blocked unit. Uh, and blocked basically means it's up against something it can't defeat, so you can just pull them back. And you have four action points, and two of those two of those four actions cost two, one of those costs three, and placing a unit, for example, costs one, so you can place four units, and you just spend them however you choose. It's it's a game. It's a game that was made, and I always feel bad, especially whenever they send you stuff in the game that's like, read this before playing. It's like... Thanks to you, we can say we had a dream start. My dream came true. And then it makes you feel bad when you play it and you're like, yeah, I mean, that's great, man. I'm happy for you. You you got a game made. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad people like it if, if they do. It's not the worst game I've ever played. I've, I've clearly played worse. I've played games that have lower, obviously lower quality where they didn't give a shit. I've, had, I've played games that have super high quality and you can tell they didn't give a shit. So this is clearly a labor of love game. Uh, it's just it's just not for me. Um, I kind of find that there is some choices on what you're going to do, but but the problem is is it seems like that the designers uh, English is not their first language. Uh, this rule book is uh, theoretically 51 pages, but it's not 51 pages of rules. It's this is like three rule books into one uh, because it's three different languages. They have English, then I think it's uh, Norwegian, uh, Netherlands, and then French. Um, so whenever you're trying to figure it out, it, there's very specific things that are like that it's just never explained. Like for example, whenever you're placing a, a unit down, like you assume, okay, just place it down, like I place an infantry down and then I want to place out a tank. And you place the tank in front of the infantry unit, just because that's ease of access and that's the one you're sending forward to go fight. But thematically, you're like, well, I, I deployed the infantry first, so he should be making his way to conquer the road, so then the tank should be behind that. But nowhere does it actually explain how that works, so every single time I've played this, I've played it where you just put them in, in the front. Um... There's also, like, whenever you conquer a road, which basically means you make it from one end of your uh, board to the other end uh, with no gap, so it's a singular line, you conquer it, and you take one of your little discs, and you place it over there. And that means, okay, that's locked up. You're holding the line. Hold the line! And so then, okay, well, because that's completely filled up, your opponent can't put any units down, so they can't uh, ever remove them. However, there's special units called the Mortar that you can place that can attack 
uh, two roads away. So if it's, let's say, I'm, you know, road four is currently conquered from my last game. If I place my mortar down on road six and I went over and de defeated a unit, well, can you do that? Can you destroy a unit on a conquered road? Who knows? Most likely not, um, because then this game would never end. Uh, and there is some strategic uh, elements to that, because if, like for example, the tank is your longest regular unit, the next one up is your uh, your infantry special unit, so you can clearly see the difference here. This is a general. Uh, he's an infantry, but he beats out all other infantry, but he still loses to tanks. Uh, and he counts as your only, you can only ever have one special unit out on the on the board. So if, uh, so yeah, so if you like place all your tanks to run the line and conquer it, well, that's great. You got, you know, you conquered an area, uh, one of your two roads if, or potentially three, but now you have no more tanks. So your tanks are all used to secure that road, which means you can't kill off uh, the, the, your opponent's infantry units. So there's a little bit of strategy there. And also, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket because I've talked about attacking. So if I place if, if I place my sergeant infantry next to, and eventually like the two meet up, so like uh, the opponent, like the red and the green eventually touch, well, if my infantry is better than uh, the opponent's, um, let's say, anti-tanks, uh, yeah, anti-tank mines, well, then I destroy it, like I disable it. But if you completely run an entire road with all that unit, all of those get removed. So you don't want to just completely fill up one spot if you can't fulfill it out. So there is some element of strategy on where you want to place it, but eventually you have to get to the other side of the road. And that's fine. Like, it's not bad by any means. I just don't find it all that particularly exciting or strategic. Uh, like, there's a lot of abstract games that I play where I'm, like, really just crunching. And here, I never really felt like I had to do that. Um, there are some slight nuances with the game like this. Is like, for example, you can only ever have one special unit out on the board. But if your units get removed, they're not, like, removed from the game. They just come back. But So, like, if I put out my infantry general and he someone places a tank and removes him okay that's a lot of ground i lost that's one that's five yeah that's five squares i lost but he's available to come out again or i can put in another unit however if you conquer a road with him well he's locked there he's still on the board so that is you can't use any of your other special units like your like your spy or your um your mortar uh, or your command tank so there's like four special units overall. And that's like the overall depth, I think, of this game. The objectives, you have a bunch to choose from. So it could, your games could vary radic uh, radically in like, oh, I have to conquer roads one and two. Well, someone else has to conquer, you know, two, uh, six and seven. Okay, well, you're on one side and you're on the other, so... Yeah, if one person gets to go first and do all their actions, they're most likely going to win because unless the other person goes to stop them. Like, you could just try and race, but it's a race, so if I got a head start, then I'm going to win that race. So then you kind of are forced to stop them on one end. Uh, but then the game can get kind of... I'm not going to say exciting because it doesn't ever get exciting, uh, interesting, I guess, if your objective happens to be Conquer Roads 1 and 2, and someone else's is 2 and 5, so you are competing for controlling one road, or you can do the three random. But, they're there, there's nothing unique about these. What I do not like about this game is it wants to be kind of like a tactile strategy game of 1v1, but then they throw in completely random elements and that's where these victory cards come in. And this is also a strange kind of thing, is you think victory cards, and you're like, oh, I won. Well, no, you only straight up win when you meet your objective, but when you com uh, conquer a road, you draw a card from a, uh, from a victory deck, and it could be things like, oh, 
you get three action points in a round of your choice. That's huge. That's huge. Your opponent can't do anything about that. There's others where it's like your enemy can only use two action points in their round. Uh, but then there's also weird stuff where it's the exact same thing, but it's worse. Gain two action points in the round of your choice. It's like, ooh, exciting. Uh, your enemy has to show you their objective card. Some of these, it says play when it suits. That's also weird, you know, wording. It, it clearly means, obviously, you know, play at your, you know, whenever you want. Uh, like... Because, like, play when it suits makes it seem like there's a condition that you have to has to be met before you can play it. But, nope, it's just you get three action points. And these are immediate, so you conquer a road, you draw, and you're like, oh, yay, I'm going to play this. And then I'm close to fulfilling my other road, and I win. There's nothing your opponent can do about these. And I do not like that. I really, really do not like that in, in strategy head-to-head -head games. It's like, okay, well, it doesn't really matter how well I play when you can just get basically an extra turn. Like, that's three action points that you're most likely going to use uh, to place more units. So, I do not like the victory cards. The other expansion, uh, let's see. Yeah, maneuver cards. They add in another random element of these maneuver cards that you that you put in between uh the the far right the middle and the far left roads uh and whenever someone gets to it they flip it and it's like oh what is this and this one happens to count as an infantry so you just leave it there and you're like oh okay great i have an extra infantry others are straight up like hey congratulations you got a medal of honor you get two extra action points like it's it's completely random, and what's also weird is, like, it, it, it's all just on the sheet, so you just look at the number. Congratulations, sir, due to your heroic actions, you've been granted the Medal of Honor. You gain two extra action points for a random round. Okay, well, I think that just means when you want two extra action points. So then, you could potentially have it to where you, uh... Like, you conquer a road, draw the victory card. Oh, hey, it's three extra action points. I think I'll use that right now. And then you go and hit the middle of your next road. It just happens to be the one with the maneuver card. And it's Medal of Honor. Cool that you basically got five extra action points. And then you run that, and your opponent just has to sit there and be like, well, I guess I lost. Cool, I guess. Like, yeah, I mean, the game says it takes one hour uh, one hour for you to put in all this effort to try and, you know, pl you know, block people and attack and then use special units strategically, try and advance on the road, and then your opponent just kind of gets this random extra turn and a half to then swing it completely in their favor, and you're just like, oh man, I'm so glad I attempted anything. It's so, it's, it's random elements, and I get why they're in here, because I don't think the game... Like, the units aren't interesting. Like, the special units kind of are. Like, I kind of like... Like, the mortar's neat. You place it on the road, and you can fire on another road to defeat a unit. That's cool. The command tank can flank, so it can attack on the road to the left or right, and then also in front of it. That's neat. The spy defeats every unit, and it's a single tile, but it defeats any unit, and can only be defeated by another spy. And your general... I mean, defeats any infantry, but it's also insanely long. The special units are really, really cool. It's everything else that you're mainly using that's kind of lame and just provides nothing uh, for me. It weirdly, and I don't know why, but it weirdly reminds me of Stratego. And I think it's mainly because in Stratego, you you have two units uh, two on the other side of the board, and you're just kind of advancing them. Uh... That's, that's it, but I don't know why I get a weird Stratego vibe from this. And, and yeah, so it's like, if you're wanting a kind of an abstract, but really, really strong 1v1 uh, war game, I mean, this, this has more theme than the game I'm about to suggest, but I would highly recommend Blitzkrieg. That one... That one just does does it so well. Like they're not they're not even remotely close to the same game. Well, I mean they kind of are in the sense Blitzkrieg is also about tug of war in different scenes, 
uh, by utilizing different units. Uh, and they also have a bunch more special units. So if you're wanting that kind of like back and forth uh, between players and also in a, sign in a fifth of the time, Blitzkrieg is fantastic. I've, I've, oh, even whenever I get demolished, I always have a great time. This one, clearly a labor of love. Someone wanted, really wanted to make this. I just don't know who this is for. Um, so that's that's really all I all I got on it. Oh, uh, overall, on a scale of one to ten, it's right in the middle. It's it's the fivest five I could ever five, like. And I mean, I I think the like the comp the units are nice, like for the fact that they're wooden, uh, you don't see that a whole lot. Well, I guess you do with like meeples and stuff, but, um, so there's that. But then like the board itself feels like it's a prototype board, like it it like lifts up in weird areas, and it almost feels like this is still glued on. Like my my board isn't even completely finished in the corner, so. Like I said, I thought this was a prototype when it was sent to me, and sometimes that happens. Like I can't, like not every game can be a masterpiece. But if you're going on and and getting things crowdfunded, well then make sure that the finished copy looks like a finished copy, uh, because this didn't to me, especially the way it was shipped. It was like when I got it, I'm like, oh, I okay, yeah, they must have. I must have asked them for a review copy, or they must have told me they were going to send me one because. Uh, that that clearly is what this is. No, it's it's not. It's not a review copy. Uh, so yeah, five out of ten for Clash of the Ardennes. And uh, that's it, everyone. Let me know what you think of the game in the comments below. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you. Hey everyone, thank you for watching, and I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If you would like to see more of my content, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever I upload any new content. If you feel like supporting the channel, you can go ahead and click that Patreon link to be taken to my Patreon, and any help is truly appreciated. Other than that, stick around for any, any other run-throughs or reviews or cool top tens or whatever I feel like putting on. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.